unseen. A dwelling of pure thought shaping our futures. The dream web. Watched over by servants, billions of years old. For centuries, the dream web has been stable, but now evil is about to take control. Keepers, the web of dreams is slowly unwinding. The seven evil powers on Earth are joining forces. If they become too strong, the dream web will be destroyed. Who will be the deliverer? Where will it be? We must not let the web be broken. Silence! The chosen ones are becoming aware. If they discover their powers, they will become too strong. Has the seed been planted? Yes, it has grown strong and he is stirring. The time has come and I shall awaken him. This is the future. I know what you want from me. I understand now. The Seven are becoming stronger. They've haunted my dreams. I know. They control the Seven Points of the Dream World. Must they be destroyed? Yes. I can feel they are all close to me. Who will be the first? His name is Crane. He is the weakest of the seven. How will I find him? He is very near. Arm yourself and begin your search. Time is running short, my brother. My girlfriend Eden lies in bed with her eyes half closed and the covers pulled tightly around her. Her dark hair spills out over the pillow. She has a slight frown on her face. Eden opens her eyes slightly and gives me a smile. Concern shows in her eyes. Eden, I feel terrible. You're hot. You're soaking wet. You were dreaming again last night. It scares me when you shout out. I thought the dreams had gone away, but last night they were worse than ever. And I don't think it's just bad dreams. What do you mean, not just dreams? It all seems so real and so vivid. My mind is telling me things that I don't want to do. You have to stop talking like this. See a doctor. I'm worried about you. I'll be okay. I just need to sort some things out in my mind. Look, it's late. You've got to go to work or Sparky's going to be mad. We can talk when you get back. 
Alright. But you will be here when I get back, won't you? I'll always be here for you. Pouring rain outside Sparky's bar lies a totally unconscious man. He wears a brown suit that is stained and torn from months of sleeping rough. The man is surrounded by empty beer bottles. As I approach, the man doesn't stir. Hey! Wake up! There is still no response from the man, whose face rests in a pool of rainwater. Can you hear me? There is still no sign of movement. Perhaps he isn't even alive. Sparky has stood behind the bar. Obviously, he has no staff available and has to work himself. Sparky is overweight and scruffy. His belly pokes out from beneath his gray shirt. He doesn't look very happy. Hey, Ryan. Did you get my mail net message? No, uh, sorry. I mean, sorry I'm late. Oh, that's okay. No problem at all. Really? Yeah. You're fired. If you bothered to read my message, you would have known by now. You can't do that. I, I, I really need the money. Sorry, Ryan. I can't use unreliable staff. <sighs> Look, I I'm sorry. I've been having a few problems sleeping recently. Uh, I I'll try and pull myself together. 
I'll tell you what to do. Take a couple of weeks off. Try and sort yourself out. You ain't good to me like this. Thanks. I, I really appreciate it. Do you think I could have my wages? Oh, Joe. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. Even though I ended up having to work behind a bar myself. Let's run your car through the scanner. Okay. And I promise I'll sort myself out. Sparky looks at me expectantly. Perhaps I'll do as he says. Sparky has stood behind the... Sat at the bar is a large man who is smoking a cigarette. He stares across the bar impassively and occasionally glances at the TV. He looks as if he's having a really bad time. The man takes a puff of his cigarette and asks me, What's up? Mind if I sit next to you? Do what you like. I don't care. Thanks. What's on the TV? Oh, um, it's a program about that singer, David Crane. What about him? He's playing some concert the other night. Just arrived in town. Where's he staying? At uh, a hotel called the Regency. Hey, what is this anyway? What's all the questions? Oh, no reason. The Regency is that big place near the bridge, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, now why don't you just shut up and leave me alone? I recognize the vid game player as someone who comes into the bar fairly often. He wears a brown leather jacket and torn and faded jeans. He's concentrating intently on his game. The vid game player is wrestling furiously with the controls on the arcade machine and ignores me as I approach. Hi there. Uh, how's it going? Look! I'm trying to concentrate! Just leave me alone! And your name's, uh, Steve, isn't it? Yeah, that's right! Now could you just leave me alone? Uh, I guess I should get going anyway. See you later. I recognize the vid game. Lewis is one of my oldest friends. He sits slumped on the john. He's wearing a hideous green shirt covered in food stains and dull gray sweatshorts. His belly pokes out from underneath his shirt. He's almost asleep. Hey, Ryan, how are you, man? I feel pretty bad. Uh, I'll be all right, but I could use some help. Help? What do you mean, I can't help with anything? Look, I'm in deep trouble, and there's some things I need, and, and I think you can get them for me. Sure. What are you looking for? Drugs? Not today. I need a gun, and I don't know anyone who has one. Well, there's this dealer I know. He's into heavy stuff like that. Weapons and shit. It'll cost, though. Just tell me what to do, Lewis. What do you need a gun for, anyway? What would you want with a gun? I can't explain. It's too complicated. I'm not even sure what I'm doing myself. If you're serious, then you need to go to a pool hall by the river. There's a guy called Silverman who'll help you. 
Where's this pool hall then? If you find my membership card for the place, the address is on that. And you'll need the card to get in. Thanks, Lewis. I won't forget this. No problem, man. I just hope you know what you're doing. Yeah, Lewis. Me too. Behind the glass, an assistant leafs through a magazine. He's about 50 years old and has ginger hair and small round glasses. He has sat with his chin in his hands and pays little attention to me. Look, I'm sorry. If you have the new membership, I can't issue any until next week. Actually, I've got a friend's card here. You can use someone else's card if you like. If it's okay by them, it's okay by me. Won't the electronic thumbprint on the card be wrong if I use this card, though? Look, I shouldn't be doing this, but if you use someone else's card in the reader by the doors, I'll sort out the rest. Yeah, thanks. I'll do that. No problem. You can owe me one. smoking a cigarette and speaking in a low voice to the man opposite him. As I approach, he looks at me with suspicion. What can I get you? I've been told I can get some help. Oh yeah? By who? Uh, my friend's name is Lewis. Lewis King. He told me to mention his name. Lewis King, yeah. I've seen him around here a couple of times. What exactly are you looking for? I need a gun. I mean, I, I don't know much about them, but I need one. How will he know who I am? I'll ring through and tell him you're on your way, and that you know Lewis. The office is down to your right, make sure you have some money. Oh, right. I will. And thanks. on a large cigar. He wears an off-white shirt and blue waistcoat. He drums his fingers on the desk in an irritated manner. He looks as if he doesn't trust me. Good evening. My name is Silverman. What's yours? Oh, my name is Ryan and I need your help. Lewis King is a friend of mine and he said you would have what I want. Your friend Lewis was right. I can usually help people out, providing they have enough money. Oh, yes. I have money. I just hope I have enough. And you're after some kind of handgun, yes? Yeah, something that's easy to use. I've never used a gun before, but I need to now. I need to kill him. Please, Ryan. 
Don't tell me any more than I need to know. I can supply you with a gun. What you do with it is up to you. How much will it cost? For 200, I can give you an SI-140. It's a fully automatic pulse laser weapon with a full pack of ammunition and computerized sights. Uh, that sounds fine, I guess. A child could use it. The gun virtually aims and fires for you. Will this weapon be acceptable? It'll be fine, thanks. If you could just put your cash card through the scanner on the desk, I'll deduct the money. Okay. And thanks for your help, Mr. Silverman. That's all right. Give Lewis my regards when you see him. has dyed yellow hair which stands on end, a luminous green shirt and leather trousers and a jacket. He seems bored as if he stood here for hours. Hey, are you waiting here to see Crane too? Uh, not really. I'm just staying here for a few nights. What do you know about Crane? There's nothing we don't know about him. We've been waiting here for two days just to catch a glimpse of him. Are you sure he's in this hotel then? Oh yeah, he's got the best room in the hotel. The penthouse suite. It's supposed to have a pool. Well, I hope you see him then. Yeah, catch you later. Sat on the sofa is a girl wearing a purple dress made of a strange material that seems to change color slightly as she moves. She sits staring out across the lobby. Occasionally she says something to the man stood next to her. Oh, hello. We're waiting for David Crane. Don't you just love him? I... I've been to all his gigs and I've got all his albums. Well, actually... You know, I've even got his early stuff. He spat on me at a concert once. God, it was great. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it was. Catch you later. Oh, well, okay. I'll see you then. The receptionist is a middle-aged woman in a red dress who is looking decidedly agitated. She hammers away on her keyboard and stops occasionally to answer the phones. She's wearing a pair of large glasses. Hello, sir. Welcome to the Regency Hotel. How can I help you? I'd like a room for tonight, please. Well, we haven't got many left, and they're all quite expensive. David Crane, the singer, he's staying here tonight, you know. Oh, yeah. I suppose he's got all the best rooms. Well, Mr. Crane has the penthouse suite naturally. But there is a vacant suite below, and that's quite luxurious. And how much would that cost just for tonight? I'm afraid that's 830 altogether, including tax. Will that be all right? Uh, yes. I guess so. Well, if you'd like to sweep your cash card through the scanner, I can give you your room key. Right, thanks. The receptionist looks at me expectantly. Perhaps I should use my cash card now.
sits up in bed with a pillow over his groin. His forehead is beaded with droplets of sweat and his chest rises and falls with his rapid breathing. He looks as though he's scared of me. So you found me. The keepers have sent their deliverer. Then you are, Crane. It won't do any good. Killing me will only make the others stronger. I must kill you. Then the nightmares will end. No, please, spare me. No, I know what I have to do. Crane sits up in bed with a pillow over his groin. His forehead is beaded with droplets of sweat and his chest rises and falls with his rapid breathing. He looks as though he's scared of me.
The soldier is dressed in camouflage with leather boots halfway up his shins and a large machine gun gripped firmly in his hands. He looks as if he's been gritting his teeth like this for hours. He looks around nervously as I watch. The soldier looks straight at me and ignores me. Can I go inside? I have an appointment. Nope. Nobody's allowed in or out. Security regulation. But I have an important appointment. You heard me. No, please leave. Right. I get the message. Behind a thick piece of glass is an old man with wispy gray hair and bald at the top. He has a blue uniform on with gold rings on the cuffs and lapels. He leans on the counter as if he's waiting for someone. How can I help you, young man? Uh, I've got an appointment. Look, the military have closed us down for the day. No one has an appointment. But you must have made a mistake. I can take your name and book you in for tomorrow if you like. Why is the TV station shut down? Military General Sterling has a special live TV interview this afternoon about the Middle East. I see. Well, thanks anyway. Goodbye, sir!
The keeper of the dream web stands before me with his head bowed and his hands clasped together in front of him. His robe hangs heavily from him and I can barely make out a face beneath the hood. You have done well, Ryan. Sterling's power has been absorbed by the web, but the remaining five are aware of your presence. They will try and stop you. Now they have a leader. What is his name? His name is Sartain. He is a wealthy and influential businessman. How will I find him? We feel that he is close to someone you know well. This may provide a path to him. Must I release Sterling's power from the Dreamweb? Yes, Ryan. On your path through the Dreamweb, you will find a crystal. The crystal has a power that will protect you. Do not leave the Dreamweb without it. Now make haste.
The keeper of the dream web stands before me with his head bowed and his hands clasped together in front of him. His robe hangs heavily from him and I can barely make out a face beneath the hood. Ryan, we believe that the remaining four have begun to fight amongst themselves. What has happened? We sense that one of their number, a woman named Chapel, is weakening. If you reach her before the others, she may help you. We fear that they are planning her assassination. What if she is killed before I find her? Then she has been lost to us. Seek out a woman called Underwood. Where is she? She works for the government, but now she is under the protection of Sartain's men. We do not know where. I know what I must do. By the squad car, I see a cop taking notes. He looks up at the devastated building in front of him occasionally before he writes in his notepad. Sorry, sir. I'll have to ask you to leave the area. What happened? Looks like a terrorist attack. Are you a journalist? No, I'm not. Actually, I'm in this chapel. Is she inside? Well, so far we haven't found a body inside the house. Can I go inside? No, you can't. There's still plasma residue from the explosion. It's too dangerous. Okay. Maybe I should speak to her family. Yes, sir, that's a good idea. Now, if you don't mind, I've got work to do. Okay. Goodbye.
The woman lies in a pool of blood and entrails. Amazingly, she's still alive, and she's trying to dig her fingernails into the floor in a desperate, futile attempt to drag herself away from me. Uh, Ryan! That's your... That's your name, isn't it? Yes. I wonder how long it would take for you to find me. I've come this far. I have to kill you all. Then kill me, you bastard! End this pain! Where are the others? As if I tell you. O'Rock is growing. Soon he'll be too strong. Then I must hurry. But first... Show me mercy! Show me the heavens! I want to die now! The woman lies in a pool of blood and entrails. Amazingly, she's still alive and she's... Oh, what are you waiting for? It hurts, doesn't it? Kill me, please! The dream web stands before me with his head bowed and his hands clasped together in front of him. His robe hangs heavily from him and I can barely make out a face beneath the hood. Ryan, you have done well. Only two remain, but they are very strong. I can feel their strength. The two left are a priest named O'Rourke and a violent psychopath named Beckett. The priest has almost reached entropy. He will use his power to transcend the boundaries of Earth. He seeks higher goals than the mere domination of the Dreamweb. Can I reach him in time? Perhaps. But you must act quickly. You already know where he is. What if he has reached entropy? Then pursue Beckett. He is the last and most evil threat to the Dreamweb. He holds the final key. Now, you must hurry.
web is almost balanced. I have lived a tortured life, so many victims, so many I have saved. I have never reached my potential, I have been waiting for you. been freed. The commanding positions have been filled. No absolute good or evil, but neutrality. We will now protect the web. Your task is finished. From here, you must return to your life. It will never be the same, and the consequences will be great. You have saved our dreams. Halt! This is the police. Put down your weapon and walk slowly towards us. If you do as we say, you will not be harmed. 